thank you for the opportunity to be in your presence today. We pray that you speak to us in a very special way. Only you know what you want to say today. Do not allow me to speak. I don't want to speak, Lord God. I need you to speak, Lord Jesus. So put a special type of restraint on my lips, on my soul, on my mind. Take full control of what is said. If you minister to your people, you can touch them. You can draw them unto you. You can deliver. You can set free. You can heal. Lord God, you can do what no man can do for them. I know I am too, too, too opinionated. So set my opinions aside. Like only you can. In Jesus' name I pray. Church, long, long time ago, some people probably never heard me say that promise, but I did make this promise, and some people can be can testify of this promise. That uh, uh, I will do my best when I open this Bible to, 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 to preach it the way that I see it. Yep. Amen. Amen. I said I'm not going to hide from nothing in here. I'm not going to dodge nothing in here. And you guys somehow, after I've been doing this for years, y'all keep coming. Amen. I heard one amen. amen. <laughs> I said y'all keep coming. Amen. I don't care about a packed building. It could have been three of y'all in here. I would have preached the same way. No? The Bible? The Bible? The Bible? Amen. I preach the same way. I am excited to continue to preach a cornerstone series in the body of Christ, and that's called Disciple 2024. You never heard this before? Because no one has ever preached Disciple 2024 before. I recognize that God is looking for disciples. I used the word, it was called Christoformity last year, but that's not it. The truth is, a disciple, I'm starting to preach right now, looks like the person that's discipling them. When this word was used, is different back then than it is now. I'm preaching, but I don't know if y'all following. You see, today, when we use the word disciple, it's something simple. It's a teacher and a student. It could be a karate class, right? It could be, it could be a rooftop. Yes? No? It could be a classroom, right? That's how we understand it. And to be honest with you, they really, they really, we really don't need any true intimacy. I'm going to show you this, how you throw the punch, and you're going to learn how to throw the punch, and that's discipling. I'm going to teach you how to, how to, how to navigate this math problem, Sister Delores, amen, amen, amen. And you're going to navigate this math problem, and that's the end of it. I'm going to show you how to receive these patients. You're going to receive the patients like I showed you to receive the patients, and that's the end of it. That is not discipleship as the Bible understands it. And here's the problem. Because you're thinking it's just a teacher student. That was not the case. Back then, to become a disciple, you had to study before you could be a disciple. You had to know all this stuff before you could find somebody, a rabbi, to be a disciple of the rabbi. You would have had to know all this information. It's like going through high school before you could enter college. And then when you're done with that, there's two parts. There, there, there's the, the, the Torah, which is the written word. Then you got to 
to do another part. You got to learn a second part. That would be like college. You got to learn another part. That part, oh my goodness, is where you get the oral traditions that, you, that were forbidden to be written down. That's the second part. And then there was a third part. This is before you ever have a, a, a rabbi to study under. There was a third part. Oh, my goodness. Do I have a church? Amen. That's where you can prove yourself that you can say verbatim the scriptures and the oral traditions. Then you qualify to find a rabbi to be a disciple for. And not everybody were disciples. Can I say that? Not every Christian is a disciple. Amen. 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 But I want to know if you want to be a disciple. Yes, Lord. In 2024, do you want to be a disciple? When Jesus Christ elected the disciples, he, he elected young men. And when he requested that they be his disciple, what they were agreeing to was a life fully dedicated to studying under this man and becoming like this man. Amen. They studied the man so much that you need, you you got to tie your shoes like they tie their shoes. You got to brush your teeth like they brush their teeth. You got you to gotta eat like they eat. I mean, that's what a disciple was. You look like the person who discipled you. You picked up their mannerisms. You studied with them day and night. You ate with them. You lived life with them on a constant basis. Jesus Christ only got away from the disciples to pray. And when it was all said and done, they don't even need to know who you studied under. Right. Just by how you look, by how you talk, by how you treat people, by how you walk, they know that's a disciple of John the Baptist. That's a disciple of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's a disciple of X, Y, Z, because you have. Amen. And so right now, there are disciples of Jesus Christ. We exist. Yes. But there are few. Yeah. 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 Why we do not meet the qualification? We're not willing to pay the cost, which is love, Loyalty and everything. If you think this thing is about being a better version of yourself, you messed it up. If you think this is about being a better person, you messed it up. If you think this thing is about people saying, <laughs> clapping their hands for you and saying, good job, you missed it. So we find ourselves in the middle of a sermon series called Disciple 2024.